Hey guys, welcome back to the Covenant Podcast. Uh, I'm excited uh, today to have the rest of our elders. If you were with us last week, you noticed that we had, uh, I think we had the, the first five of our guys, and today we're going to bring in the last one, so it's part two kind of thing. For a couple reasons, uh, number one, some of these guys uh, have to work for a living, and one of them has been out of state for a minute or two, and, uh, and the other reason it's kind of hard to get 10 people in here at one time and get everybody to have a, a, a valuable conversation. So uh, on the off notion that maybe you didn't watch last week, we'll talk to you a little bit about uh, maybe lay some groundwork for why we're set up as an eldership at Covenant. Uh, our, our first pastor, uh, Charles Brown, actually set the church government in place at Covenant with, with what we call our servant leadership, which makes up, which is two groups of people, uh, our eldership and our, and our deacons. Uh, we believe that our eldership's main responsibility is the spiritual direction of the church and uh, our, our deacons, which make up the, the, the other half of our servant leadership, kind of make sure that everything's uh, at work, you know, going the things that we implement as a group. Um, and and I, I said this last time and I'll say this again. One of the, I believe one of the strengths of our eldership is, is the fact that we, we love each other. We have this saying on our staff, uh, we talk about it pretty much every week, or at least every other week, that we not only love each other, but we actually like each other too. And that's a big deal for us. And I, I find that to be also true in this group of people. Uh, we we don't always agree, which is a good thing. Uh, we we actually uh, think there's there's create that creates a healthy relationships when we don't always agree. Uh, but what what we do do is have a, a a respect and an honor for one another. And since we love each other deeply, and since we actually like each other. Uh, we, we never leave our meetings with, with disunity in our hearts. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a thing we really strive for. Uh, these guys are, I, I don't know of a pastor that has a, a better group of men that to encourage and bless, hold accountable. All those things uh, that we do uh, here at Covenant is, is, is made possible by the men in this room and the men in the room last time. Now, this group will be a little bit of a different makeup uh, than the one we had last time. Uh, the last time I think we had three or four of those guys that had been here since the church started. And, uh, and in this group of people, Nathan's been here quite a few years. He came on not too long after that. Uh, and, and Grant did as well, but Grant and I actually came on to eldership about the same time. Grant reminded me before we went on the air that, uh, that it was 2001, uh, which reminded us both that we're getting old, but it also reminded us that we've been doing this for a while. And then Aaron uh, was probably, if I if I could say two times ago, Aaron was an elder that came on 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 the um, on on the eldership. Uh, what year did you come on the eldership? Do you remember? No, you should ask Grant to look it up for you, like that. <laughs> 2010. So, uh, and I'll let him talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then Anthony is our newest elder who who came on uh, just a few years ago. The, the neat thing about this particular group, these two guys over here, actually grew up in, in my youth group, meaning that I am really old, uh, that I got, I got young people that grew up in my youth group now in eldership here. And so, <laughs> but one of the, and I told them a while ago that one of the reasons that we're doing this is because so many people want to know a little bit about you guys, uh, your personal story. And so I told them that I wanted to give them to give a brief testimony, a little bit about about their life, how they came to know Jesus, and maybe even how they ended up at Covenant. And I'm going to start with Aaron over there on the end, and let him tell you a little bit about himself. So, well, we um, I guess we got here when I was in tenth grade. Uh, Dad came on staff, tenth um, or eleventh, and um, <coughs> so kind of came over here with with that uh, being the reason. Um, as he came over, um, I don't know if it started with staff, to be honest. I think we maybe can't remember that exactly. How Here for a little while before we came on staff. Yeah. We came in 88 right. and on staff by 90. So uh, before that, Dad being a pastor, being a PK, uh, always yeah. um, had that label uh, growing up. And uh, so went through the, the trials and tribulations of what that brings, uh, but also making choices of um, – putting basketball number one and really wanting to pursue that in college and different things allowed that to kind of override some of the – definitely what should have been there um, spiritually and what should have been number one in the priority of, of the Lord. And, and luckily, the uh, Lord kept pursuing uh, me, and um, 
I remember I always had a faith. I mean, sometimes it was so that I would have a good game every now and then um, <laughs> or hit shots. <laughs> yeah, making deals with the Lord. With God, yeah. I don't think that works for the record. We don't want to get into all that. But, um, but I remember a time specifically here, uh, Pastor Mike and him were actually gone to Brownsville, uh, down to Pensacola, and to a uh, youth conference. And uh, I really knew I should have been on that trip. I wasn't living the life I didn't uh, that I was supposed <clears throat> to have been living. Was not uh, did not have my life dedicated to the Lord at all. And I was still living for me and being selfish. And I remember being here. Uh, Pastor Mike referred to Pastor Brown, and it was a Sunday morning. It was kind of thin. I remember out there with the crowd because so many kids were gone. And, um, but I remember then, Lord, just grabbing my heart and just going, you know, you should have been down there. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's time to come home. And I remember even going up and being able to just to kind of commit that to the body even here at Covenant. And I don't know if any of y'all were here, cause maybe, but, um, but committing that to the Lord that day, just going, you know, uh, of acknowledgement of where I was at and what I've done. And so from that point on, um, it's just been – uh, what what the Lord has allowed me to walk into the different roles, the different um, different lives that we've been able to affect here when he called me into ministry. I was at the YMCA for years, was able to do ministry a little bit, started to pull me away from um, being in directorship and stuff, started pulling me away from what I really wanted to do with Be With Kids. Didn't ha- uh, was getting away from more to eight to five type job. And about, I guess, as Pastor Mike was getting ready to be called elsewhere in teaching school. The Lord was calling me here. I was in a, a Chicago at a, a conference at uh, Willow Creek, and um, thanks Cam Corder for taking me out there to hear the Lord's word uh, with the why, but he said, you're getting ready to go into ministry, and uh, come back, told him that was what I needed to do, and you know, time and wise, it seemed to fit what was going on here, and I was student pastor for uh, about 18 years after Pastor Mike uh, left to go to school and then came back as pastor, went full-time after about 15 or 16 years and have been here ever since. And so, um, and I think we'll touch a little bit later on what's going on now, but um, just um, blessed beyond blessed to be able to to lead here at Covenant to see what's going on and in this role, not just as staff, but as eldership. Um, it, it's an honor. It really is. So. Uh, and next up is uh, uh, Anthony Rippey. I'll, I'll let you tell your story. I won't, I won't give your testimony like I've given Nathan's many, <laughs> M- many, many times I, you've given mine. Yes. I, can, I can share it to, to an extent, I guess. I'll, I'll share it. So um, I think I, I came here as a child <clears throat> several times, but probably officially started in maybe 10th grade, probably mm-hmm. same around 10th grade. Um, like I'll, I'll say like Aaron I was it was more selfish I didn't I, I wasn't the kid that I wasn't the drinker or the the, the, the guy that did drugs uh, but I was the the guy that would you could probably label as ah, you know I'm a I'm a good guy you know and uh, so uh, I would come to, to covenant to come to church uh, more so to, to be honest it was uh, the the check in the box really is what it came down to but um, probably I, I'm going to go with 2002, um, is when I really started to kind of outline what, what that really truly looked like for me, uh, which was I'd, <laughs> I'd ask someone to marry me and they, they said no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Good so it was, you know, I'm like, what do you mean? No. But, um, <laughs> That that was probably a defining moment for me because it kind of outlined the honestly the, the 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 rest of my life. I I still remember the first time I, I I heard God speak to me. I was I was sitting out here, and you know I'm talking to him, um, and, and not that you should challenge him, but I, I challenged him in that moment, um, and it was just clear as day to me uh, as he spoke to me. And uh, at that moment, I realized, okay, well. Um, it's not what I want, it's what he wants. And, and at that moment is when I really started to, uh, find myself, um, and the years to come, although I had stumbles, I had many conversations with, with Nate and, and him calling me knucklehead and (laughs) yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. A a lot of the things that, that I've received from, and I'm calling Nate out, uh, Nate, that uh, helped me uh, develop 
into the person I am today, uh, which is uh, a, a, a guy that, uh, and I contribute a lot of this, uh, of course, starting with, with the father, but uh, with, with my wife, Valerie, um, because that the you know, first couple of years, and this is where I tie Nate into this, <laughs> Those first couple of years, I'm like, who yeah. who did I marry? This is not the same person, Nate Fixer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, oh, yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> we go. <laughs> and which it quickly reminded myself that I needed to fix me. So um, yeah. through through uh, understanding myself and and how I needed to truly walk that out uh, with God um, and and seek Him first. It helped uh, myself and Valerie uh, just reestablish that relationship. So, you know, I'd been here for uh, for a long time, really. I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm I mean, I'm 40 years old now. So, yeah. So, it, you know, I've been here for a while. But I look I look back on it, and 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 you know, those moments where I've stumbled or or you know, uh, essentially been challenged uh, to be better. Uh, I've I've gained that uh, through this church and and you know in the stage of my life that I'm in now, um, of course it's hectic with, with you know three kids. Um, I've learned a lot from the folks here that is that have helped me tremendously. That that uh, I now try to give give to my family and you know it it wouldn't have been possible had I not. Uh, Essentially, just give, giving it to him, and just trusted uh, that he knew he knew best um, in those moments of of trial. So, that I mean, that's kind of the the, the basic. That's pretty good. It's also the most Anthony has talked to him about three years. You know, like that. <laughs> but he's, he's a man of he's few words, but we even in elders meetings. I'm passionate. About <laughs> yeah. that's right. in, in our elders meetings, when Anthony speaks, uh, he's such a, a wise and we, you know wise young man. I guess you're not as young as I, as I remember, but the, his wisdom is so so strong, and we appreciate him so well, much. He really is. Yeah. He really is. So I'm going to uh, flip all the way to the other end of the couch and let my buddy Grant tell you a little bit about his story. Well, I was blessed in a lot of ways growing up. I had a, a great Christian mom and a great Christian dad. So yep. I guess I was I was set up um, to be successful as a Christian because of basically birth. I mean, it's just the way it went. But I was raised Methodist up until I was about 12 years old, and my mom went to hear some young evangelist over in Lincoln that was setting the woods on fire, and he was – Holy Roller, spirit-filled believing pastor sitting right here beside of me. I think he was probably about 18 or 20 at the time. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and kind of changed my world because we quickly left the Methodist church and went to a charismatic, uh, spirit-filled church. And, man, I'm going to tell you, the first couple of weeks I was there, I thought them people were crazy. <laughs> and I told mom, I said, I, we need to go back to the Methodist church. I think they got they're, they got it together over there. I'm not sure this church has it yeah. together. But the Lord kept us there, and um, mm. I had quite an experience um, from, I guess, middle school up till <clears throat> probably into high school with that church. Um, but one thing I did that was, um, I guess, when I look back now, it's disappointing to me is I chased my own goals instead of God's goals, primarily from high school into early college. I was my own God. I wanted everything Grant wanted and, and, and really didn't give myself to the leading of the Lord like I should have. Mm. And, of course, then about early college age, 1983, I think I was 21, 22 years old, I finally gave it to the Lord and went full bore uh, with what God had for me. And that's when I met my wife, Nancy, and she kind of balances me. She's, a, she, mm -hmm. she's a, a good lady in a lot of ways, loves me despite all my failures, but she does balance me. God put us together. It was a, it was a God-ordained thing for a reason. Mm -hmm. So then we spent some time after that at a small Pentecostal church in Lincoln, but never really felt like we were home. And when our first son was born, uh, Jeremiah, I think in 1991, we decided we needed to find a church that had something for kids that we could raise our kids in, in a church where they wanted to go to church, they got involved, and so that's when we found Covenant. And really, the uh, I guess the kids' ministry is really what brought us here initially, and it was very infant stages. So we came, got involved, and um, pretty much that's why we're here. 
uh, and I served as an elder, like Mike told you, since 2001. I remember that immensely because that was the year my father passed away, and I was made an elder that later that year after he died. And um, a lot of the elders who was on the board prior to that, one in particular, Neil Radabaugh, uh, came to me and encouraged me to take the position. Mm -hmm. And so I did and never looked back. It's been a great 20-plus years, Mike, mm -hmm. uh, and love all the elders and love serving with these guys. And like Mike said, we, we have our disagreements in the meetings, but we come out we know that we've all got covenants' uh, best interests at heart and want to pursue forward and just serve God with everything that we can at this church. So. And it's been very busy years for Grant because just by nature, uh, he's a doer. He yeah. works. And I, I couldn't help but think back many years ago, that's how you ended up pursuing your own dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, watching Grant grow up, it was very evident. He was a very intelligent guy. He was a go-getter. Uh, I think dad was too, <laughs> yeah. and you saw that in your I dad, yeah. but uh, you talk about a praying mom yeah. that oh, yeah. would just oh, yeah. lay before the Lord and the Lord. praying yeah. for her <laughs> boys, uh, but grew up with wonderful parents and, yes, you know, yeah. lay great foundation for Grant. Amen. He reminded me of something when he said that about our relationships together, that I mentioned on the last podcast that the word elder is never found in the singular in scripture, and uh the, the accountability and the relationship that we get to enjoy and the bounce and stuff off of one another and challenging each other, in fact, at times in our, in our walk and in the direction we take the church is a, is a really important thing I needed maybe to highlight uh, that, that why there's multiple guys sitting in here instead of just me because uh, you, you definitely don't want to be a senior pastor and lead without people that hold you accountable but also men that are praying for you and, uh, and, 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 and walking it out with you. So. Right. Well, Mike, if there's not somebody holding uh, you, us, accountable, I I each other, whoever it is, there's going to become error. It can get dangerous in a hurry. It can become error. And I, and I know when I first came here, uh, church started, Covenant Church, in uh, 1984. Uh, we arrived in 1988, um, came on staff in 1990, and an elder just shortly after that. But I've said this many times. The, the first thing that I saw was the incredible organization within the leadership of this church. Mm -hmm. um, men who had been very committed for years. Some of them were in the podcast last week. Right. But just the fact that as pastors, we don't touch money. We don't count money. We don't know who gives money. Yeah. Uh, that's a safety net. Yeah. Right. And to have the... Um, Different groups of leaders. You're talking about servant leadership. I, I just think it's laid excellent foundation for this yeah, church definitely. from day one. I agree. Yeah, I really do. Uh, so for me, <clears throat> I grew up here locally, uh, First Baptist Church. As much as I believe a nine-year-old can understand the gospel, uh, I did. Uh, still to this day, remember the excitement of being baptized, water baptized there at the church one, one day. Um, just feeling like even then my, my life was being changed. Um, so, you know, never missing church. I said three times a week we were going to be there. And so, you know, Rip, you, you didn't have the drugs and the alcohol and all this. So I told many people my drug problem was being drugged to church three times a week whether I wanted to go or not <laughs> as a kid. Uh, but we were there. And then, you know, Aaron's saying, well, basketball became – that thing to him that drew him from the gospel. Or for me, it was cars. And I had a fast go-kart, and then that wasn't enough. And so I'm a teenager, and I, um, I buy my first Corvette, and I get out of school, and I work till 11 <coughs> o'clock tonight to pay for it. But then that became my God, my thing. And so, yeah, just to be a good guy, but sometimes being a happy guy and a good guy, it leads you away from your purpose. Mm -hmm. and it leads you away from the divine call. So I remember the shock when I finally began to pray, does God have a purpose for me? I mean, I know he like God loves everybody, but why am I here? You're talking about Charles Brown a while ago. If I remember correctly, I think Charles told us that he was like eight years old, uh, just some very young age. And knew that there was this calling on his life, you know, to, to preach and to lead. I didn't have a clue. Yeah. 
at eight. Uh, it, was, it was around the corner at 18. But, I relate to your Yeah, I mean, it's just like I had no idea. I just want to be in the uh, automobile business some way, shape, or form. If I couldn't drag race, let's get a car dealership. And actually working with my father-in-law uh, in a pre-owned uh, uh, car lot, uh, dealership, whatever, prior to that call coming. But when that call came, uh, Susan, my, my wife, uh, we got married at age 18 to 19, and, and I'm riding around the Corvette on pretty evenings, and she'd say, uh, come go to church with me. But, Mike, something had happened in me. Now, the church I grew up in was wonderful, um, supportive, encouraging. But, unfortunately, I got my eyes on a couple of people in leadership. Now, we're kind of talking about leadership here. At age 14, I got my eyes on a couple of men. I would see them leading in church. I would see them and hear them out in the community. And I went home, and I told my mom and dad, crushed, crushed them both. My mom wept. I said, I can live better than that and not go to church. I hear what's coming out of their mouths when I'm in the community, and I'm hearing the stories about things they're doing. I said, I'm not going. And so... Me thinking that I'm 14 going on 24, I said, uh, I'm going to start going to the drag strips on Sunday. You know, I'm going to be down at Shuffle Town. We're going to be racing. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to play a part of a hypocrite. And that just, something just in my, my soul, I couldn't do it. So anyway, long story short, fast forward, Susie kept encouraged me to go back, go back. And I told her this. I said, I, I'll, I'm not going to play church. But when I go, I'll get in head first. And by God's great grace, he gave me that opportunity around age 18 to get back into to his house uh, at a church that she and her family were going to. And uh, she, it was like worship on steroids, you know. <laughs> and so I had a lot to learn. But the Spirit of God began to change my heart and change my life. And, and early days, it was evangelism. I want to go tell I want to win souls. And I still do. There's no greater joy. But as you alluded to earlier, at some point, God began to give me a heart for the family and for marriages. And uh, it's, still, it's still a fire today. Still a fire. And Nathan's led basically since I came back to be the pastor. Uh, well, uh, our Sundays, uh, Sundays, what we call our other church, the, the Love's Journey group, uh, which is uh, about marriage enrichment and building strong marriage relationships and parenting, a little bit, anything connected to marriage uh, yeah. because of his passion to see the family unit uh, uh, pursue God as a group. And uh, it's been a, yeah. a great blessing to our church and our community. You know, Nathan uh, spent a, a lot of time as well when he was on staff uh, here, uh, which just changed last year doing a lot of counseling and things like that and a lot of it was marriage counseling a lot and, of it was. and uh, so yeah. which which brings us to our next kind of thing that we wanted wanted to talk to you guys about is is maybe give you guys some bullet points of what these guys do uh what their responsibilities are uh one of them is still on staff full time uh, the other guys are over here uh, crazy amounts of time Nathan just left being on the staff full time uh, and uh, and so I'll start with again with Aaron and just let him. We we actually a couple of years ago during COVID, Aaron was still our youth pastor, and uh, uh, God began to stir my heart that there was a lot, there was some change coming, and uh, and and I I didn't know how to approach with that with the Lord. I, I was like, what do you what do you mean? We had we had added Ryan. We were actually at the moment uh, doing a whole lot of video stuff because we weren't in the building. And I remember that little that season where God said, "I'm getting ready to shift the whole thing. I'm getting ready to shake the whole thing." Uh, and at the time, Aaron was our, our youth uh, minister, and uh, and I had actually been the one that kind of tapped him to follow me as a youth pastor here. So when the, one of the, one of the things the Lord told me, uh, I felt like in my prayer prayer life, in my prayer closet, was that Aaron was was done with youth ministry, and I was like. And, and and that's also the time I, I felt like the Lord told me that you were you were transitioning to a to a kind of a different role, yeah. uh, and I was like, well, I got to go and talk to Aaron about you know the, the guy I raised up went to my youth group, you know, got to play an integral role in discipling him into this this walk, 
uh, the, it, he wasn't, it, I felt like the Lord was getting ready to move him into something else. And thank God uh, when I got to Aaron that day and said, look, man, here's what I felt the Lord's saying. Aaron said, almost like a, oh, thank the Lord, because that's what he's been telling me too. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so anyway, I like, we, 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 do, we actually created almost a new position, uh, called executive pastor. And, and like, some people think it, that he does just what I don't want to do. Uh, there's some truth to that, yeah, a bit. but that's not, but that's not all of the truth of that. So I want to let him kind of tell you what he does, what his elder responsibilities are, and staff. Yeah, yeah kind of twofold with it being eldership and staff. Um, but going back to when the transition was happening, uh, it, it definitely Lord was working on my heart um, of not definitely not done with student ministry because I still love it and went on a youth retreat not too long ago uh, with Pastor Lance. He invited me to go, so and I jumped all over that. But um, my heart was turning more for the the family. And when I say that, I'm probably a little bit coming from what uh, Dad's influence has been over the years, but also to the family as a whole here at Covenant and to um, that role moving into a way of let's try to bring things uh, on purpose and uh, be deliberate about some things there and and really wanting to have some oversight in in those areas we've never really had issue but I think with the what was happening was growth that we have not seen uh, after the covid and so I think it was timing that was happening I really didn't understand it we talked about uh, when we were talking job description we're like we're just gonna have to put these few things down and let's see how else it goes yeah, it see how it develops yeah. and it's still developing I'll be honest even now um, uh, for for me let me just backtrack just real quick I want to throw this in because it's something that I wanted to share for the body to hear and for those that, are, that check it out when I was student pastor here even before uh, the integrity of the men that walked in these positions before, um, to me, was something that I just admired. And uh, just, you know, it was something that drew me to covenant here, whether it be in the home with Dad or Pastor Mike, that was my youth pastor, and the, and, and uh, Pastor Brown, the leadership that was here in eldership and things. It was just something that drew me close. I always said, no matter if I was here in town with other youth pastors or I was at um, a conference and we'd sit around, you get in these small groups and network and be like, we know that you guys are struggling and your eldership probably and your leadership just don't like you. They want to keep you in another building and they, they just want to keep the youth away from everybody and you probably don't get you know any resources. And I'll sit here and go, and I'd always want to go, I'll try to go last, maybe not even have to speak because when it got to me, I'd be like, man, that's not my, that's not my account of what's happening. That's cool. Um, from the start, it has been the support of the next generation, which we say is not the next leaders of the church. It's the next generation. Maybe that they're already, we pray they're already leading. And you can see here they are at Covenant. We put them in at different roles as much as we can all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's always been supported. And so for me, yeah. it's almost like I don't want to say it because I felt like I was going to offend people and they'd get upset at me. But uh, the <clears> leadership <throat> here has always looked to make sure that we're setting the next generation up from children's ministry to student ministry to whether it's college now we're trying to focus more on and it's always been that way so for me that was a huge blessing and a draw um to lead me into now to make sure you know we're kind of looking at that as well uh oversight over all ministry here as executive pastor um it is definitely want to take care of pastor mike wh uh, what he needs in that role and making sure that we're taking stuff off of him where he can stay focused on what god uh to the, just the voice of the lord and where the vision is coming uh, for him week to week uh, but also over all of our ministries we've got we set it up uh, where it's like we've got reach-in ministries, which are in-house, reach-out ministries, which are outside the walls of the church, whether it be Hesed House, Christian ministries, those type things, kind of being a liaison to those, but also oversight on those uh, in-house ministries, trying to do volunteer training a little more. We've uh, got some volunteer appreciation that will happen this year more. Um, also, our life groups have – we've increased about 12 to 14 – about 14, I think, actually, when I counted the other day, because I knew I was going to be talking about it. One of them's getting ready to start up, so that would be the 14th. Uh, over the last year, uh, like, that way we're just breaking it down into smaller. Yeah, that's additional 
from what we already had running. So yeah, and, yeah. yeah. In addition to uh, so boards growing out here, I actually had somebody come in last night wanting to start another one, and so uh, we'll add to that. So over the ministry and the day to day type stuff, try to do that here. Still trying to learn, maybe even from like Gene. You know, got a lot of stuff going on right now with the expansions and different things. Trying to figure out exactly how to go about some different things that I think may uh, be able to support and help in that role if it's uh, anything here in the building. But also uh, still trying to stir and pursue that with my uh, in my own relationship with the Lord. Uh, that's been kind of the, the different thing where you're preparing for a Wednesday night Bible study and a, sa- a Sunday night with the youth. Uh, still trying to be, and the word that I've got for this year is to be deliberate about what I need to be doing. And I'm really wanting to make sure I'm staying deliberate about staying in one-on-one communion with the Father right now. Because I can't give what I don't have, and if I'm not receiving, I can't give. And so uh, mm-hmm. the Lord's really checked me in, in 2023 to get in. I probably already this year have been studying at a deeper level than I did last. I don't I don't know that I was missing the mark last year. There were still things I was trying to navigate through, but I think there's a different calling right now of just staying close to, to that, even though those opportunities aren't what they used to be. Man, I'm in touch with so many people week in and week out, and I want to approach them and be able to leave them knowing that the leadership here is behind them, but man, I, I just want to know that it's with truth and grace how we approach these things. Oh, that's great. Just to refine that, and that's what this role yeah. is teaching me. <laughs> well, he became Aaron became like our our go to guy. We uh, he, he mentioned that, and we and we say this not because we're trying to puff up our church, because we we always say we're a work in progress from the preacher on down, and, and nobody got it. Fi- nobody, none of us have got it figured out yet. Uh, but we had such um, we had such a, a, a unprecedented growth that started happening that it was almost like we were like, whoa, where all where all these people come from? And we needed to plug them in. And so when the, when that executive pastor thing was developed, it it, it 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 fed right into that, you know, like men's meetings and women's meetings and adding small groups and things like just making sure that when in, in the volunteer ministry, you know, it takes uh, literally forty fifty people a Sunday. Uh, to actually do what we do, you know, whether it's Welcome Center, uh, what Ryan and those guys do with uh, with the video stuff, you know, with our uh, worship ministry. You know, we, we we have 40 or 50 children's ministry. <laughs> I mean, we have 40 or 50 uh, volunteers every single week, nursery. I mean, it might be 70, <laughs> but that are actually involved in making sure that we we serve our body, and so Aaron had a lot to do with that, and uh, and I appreciate what he's done with that because, as he said, it was it wasn't something we developed beforehand. And say, like, here's here's how you do it. Well, one thing I've learned about scripture is that, that that the Lord rarely tells you what you're getting ready to do, but He'll usually come back in and tell you what you just got through doing, <laughs> and uh, and that's kind of the way we our executive pastor thing has has taken shape. And so anyway, enough about Aaron. Let's talk to Anthony about what he does. He's <laughs> after after Aaron's many many titles, <laughs> um, so um, I think I've. I mean, to start, I've you know I was you know of course a deacon, right? Deacon for I think roughly ten years, maybe, um, and leading after that. Um, Probably the past seven, I think it has been um, business administrative group, call it bag. Um, and within that role, and maybe a lot of people may not know what I do for a living. Maybe it doesn't matter. I, I would assume it does. But <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm a general contractor for North and South Carolina, but I, I'm vice president of a, a national uh, home builder. Uh, for North and South Carolina. Um, being at Covenant and being on that group, um, honestly, it's it's helped me professionally, <laughs> for one, but um, I, I assist, I say I assist Gene, but <laughs> no, I, I assist uh, the, the, the group that we're on uh, with just many things, and, and really it's an oversight for... Um, how the church functions from month to month to year to year. I mean, you know, the, the day-to-day is, is functional, and, and, you know, that's something that not that we aren't involved with that because we are, 
Um, but it's more from a month to month, a year to year. Um, Budgetary a lot. But, yeah, exactly. Just just making sure that uh, you know our opinions are you know all included and and making sure that and that we keep everything flowing and all that good stuff behind the scenes. I'm I'm more of a behind the scenes kind of guy, uh, opposed to being at the front. But uh, I mean, honestly, that's that's yeah yeah. So that's that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know. We meet once a month, but at times it could be more than that, uh, um, and and via email as well. So that's, I mean, that's really what it comes down to is 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 what I do uh, for the church. Which is, so. which is incredible because uh, while he does those bag meetings, business administrative group stuff, and, and Anthony's one of the one of the very important members of helping develop our budgets for the year for all our ministries. Uh, he's. He's also, I, I'll never forget when we were praying about adding an elder, felt like it was time, and we all started praying, and, and every every elder in the room uh, came back with Anthony's name, and uh, which was beautiful because it lets you know the Lord's confirming something beautiful in, in that, uh, but the thing that really stood out about him is, is mature beyond his years, but you know, his wisdom, you know, and... Uh, as a father, as a husband, as a man of God, but also as, as somebody who cares deeply about uh, the direction of our church. And so, anyway, I appreciate all of, all of that. So, And Mike, I'm, if I could yeah. say, you know, early on when, when Rip came in and uh, he was at that season just kind of sitting and learning and all, there would be times in meetings that we would all look at each other because there would be like nuggets of wisdom or yeah. strength. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be younger and in that group, he felt confident enough. It was a safe environment for him. That he was confident enough and bold enough to bring insight, I mean, to the overall plan, financial plan of the church. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yes, God knew who to put in that position, mm -hmm. you know, and he continues to do that. and just. Uh, well, I'll say I'll blessing. trust him because I, I'm, I'm still – I'm I'm living the dream, just so everybody knows. Like I, yeah, I, I, I don't at all don't feel worthy. I'll be honest. I've never felt worthy um, to to do His will. Uh, but again, I've been blessed beyond what any anything I could have ever imagined. So uh, I'm again living living the dream. Yeah. Uh, probably so. But for such an hour as this, man. <laughs> I'm going to throw it way on the end again over to Grant. Let him tell you a little bit about Grant's been an integral part, obviously, of of our preschool development of our preschool ministry here, which has become a, a, a whole other thing. You know, I'll let him tell you about that. And then also, uh, we're starting a church, I mean, a school, not starting another church. No. We did start a church last year in Virginia, but we did our first church plant in Virginia. Uh, shout out to Stephen and Allison. But we, we're getting ready to start a school as well next year, and Grant's played a key role in that. And that was actually probably birth uh, as a piggyback to beginning a preschool here a few years ago. And, uh, and that's what Grant over, that's his main oversight, but he's got more than that. Go ahead, brother. I just want to piggyback a little bit on what Anthony said, because, Anthony, I agree with you. When I was first called to be an elder, I didn't feel worthy. I still don't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm human, but I can remember um, – some very wise guys told me, and I've heard Pastor Mike say it from the pulpit many times, God don't necessarily choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. Mm -hmm. And I think you're that. I think you're chosen, and he qualifies you. And I just mm -hmm. want to say I appreciate well, you. Well, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess, uh, like I said, Nancy and I came to Covenant in 91. Um, by probably 1996, I was a deacon serving in the children's ministry and served there for years. Um and also kind of headed up the Sunday school, which we now call Sunday Connect, a little more catchy name there. That's right. uh, so if you're not attending Sunday Connect, yep. you need to come. We got some great teachers and great opportunities there uh, for all our body from ages, babies, all the way through the seniors. We have some great teachers, great opportunities, guys and ladies that pours themselves into the word and pours that word out on kids and adults alike. So it's a great opportunity. So I do want to give a shout out to all our teachers Amen. for Sunday Connect. Sure. We appreciate you guys and all that you do. Yep, um, yep. But we worked in children's ministry for years, uh, kind of helped get that developed and, and working through all that as, as an elder, as a deacon, 
Uh, we did the VBS. We did the kids' camps, man. I mean, they were going. Uh, kids were going somewhere. We was going with them and uh, really enjoyed that over the years. And then God kind of moved us into the to the youth ministry. I served probably 10, 12 years with Pastor Aaron yeah, in the youth ministry uh, sure. and yeah, still serving that with Pastor Lance. I don't necessarily <laughs> serve in a youth ministry as an elder. I serve as a leader. I, I kind of subject myself to Pastor Aaron's mm -hmm. leading when he was in charge of youth and Pastor Lance is now and just want to love on the kids and help the kids. But back full circle to what uh, Pastor Mike was saying, we did start a preschool about five to six years ago. And honestly, when uh, Jordan Fletcher, your daughter, came to me and wanted to start a preschool, I looked there, I said, Jordan, I don't know anything about preschool, but if God's in it, let's go. Yeah. So, And we started, I think our first year, we had three classes, probably 30, 35 kids, uh, and it went well. We were impressed the first year. We, we, we made it through with no major mistakes. <laughs> And it went good, so we just kept growing it. And I think now we're serving 84, 85 families uh, on a, a five-day schedule. And we have a great staff. We've got um, probably about eight or nine um, teachers and directors. And, of course, Pastor Grace has come alongside on the board. We've got a board of directors that runs that preschool. and uh, I serve on that board with uh, – five other ladies that runs this preschool and they do a great job and so that's pretty much where we are on the preschool and like pastor mike said i, I do believe that um the school was birthed out of that because we kept having parents ask and and people in church ask are you gonna give us something beyond preschool and so i think we started praying and it, it kind of caught on with some of the other elders mm -hmm. and the vision's there so we're excited to see that happening in uh, August of this year. Wow, it's coming. coming. Well, I, was, I, was, I want to say this, just uh, add on a little bit of what he's saying. One of the, the reason that parents were coming to us as elders and, and to him as the elder over preschool is because uh, everything that Grant does, I, I think I heard Danita Estrella, the leader in Haiti, said this one time. She said, whatever you do, do it with the spirit of excellence. And and, and, I, and I see that in you. And, uh, and Nancy as well, I appreciate that you you know that you held people accountable. You, you 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 surround yourself with the right people to make. We we were we were getting even feedback from when our kids would leave our four year old class and go test for Sunday. I mean for kindergarten, they were off the charts. And even teachers, local teachers, would say, uh, "What are y'all doing over there?" And a, and a lot of it was obviously A Bs and Cs and uh, and Bible verses, but a lot of it was there. Our teachers were praying over those kids every day, and our leaders were. And uh, and I give Grant a lot of credit for that uh, because yeah, Mike. Absolutely. One thing sure. I always yeah. challenge sure. our, our preschool staff on every year uh, before school starts, I tell them, you know, the main thing is, yeah, we want the ABCs, we want them to learn to read, we want to learn their names. But I said the main thing is, if we have a child for three years from age two through four or five going into to kindergarten, when they leave covenant, I want them to know the. App, the, the arithmetic, the, the reading, the alphabet, their name, colors. But I said, the main thing is, I want to know Jesus when I leave. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Man. And if their family don't know Jesus, I want to use this platform to reach into that family and share Jesus with that family. And yes. we've seen that happen. Oh, yeah, you definitely oh, have. And sure. had people come to Covenant <laughs> because of that. So it, it's just a great opportunity to minister. Uh, and, you know, I count a blessing, man. It's like, I love kids. And uh, it's just been a great opportunity for, for Nancy and I to get involved in that. And yeah. I guess the last thing I want to talk about is we've uh, stepped into another different arena this year. It's <laughs> been a little different for us, uh, but it's going pretty good so far. At least maybe you can ask some of the college kids, they'll tell you the truth. But uh, we're kind of trying to kick back off that uh, college-age ministry because we see mm. a lot of the college-age kids who was children and youth when we were in the sure. children and youth ministry uh, we see them graduate, and they start getting distant. So, yeah, yeah right. we want to pull yeah. them back in and, and get a group that's just for them um, and, and make that happen. And that's being more successful. I think at our Christmas get-together, we probably had 20, 20 yeah. kids there. That's great. Uh, it was a great time. We had it in our house, and all the kids come over and hung out, and we just 
you know, enjoyed each other. So yeah. that's another ministry where we're kicking off. So if, if you have college age kids or if you're college age yourself and you don't know where you fit, we've got a place for them to fit. Important so, time uh, for we sure. We want to yeah, see that happen. That's yeah, important that's time. great. Great. Let me add one more thing about the preschool and I, what I appreciate this college thing is I think one of the most the wisest thing that happened this year was at Grace. Grace is our children's minister, our full-time children's minister here, uh, children's pastor here. And she she went on the board at the preschool to create an ability. <laughs> what we wanted to have happen here uh, is is kids that come through preschool and children's ministry, uh, Grace is a bridge from preschool into the church. And then it, and it becomes a bridge from, from children's church into youth ministry. And then Lance is kind of a, a bridge from youth ministry into college age ministry and the college age ministry uh, Aaron and Grant bridge them into adult ministries we have over 40 ministries that we're a part of in our community uh, and and that's why and so thank you for all that we got to move on to Nathan tell you a little bit about Nathan just um, uh, re, re, retired this year uh, yeah. Nathan played a huge role one of the one of the, my favorite stories to tell about Nathan and uh, it's probably tired of me telling uh, but I, it's not. It's a positive thing. Okay. I'm not gonna pick it. But uh, <laughs> me and Nathan are. We're, we've always had this relationship where we just go back and forth uh, and love each other deeply. He's like a, a father figure to me. Honestly, he's just been a, a blessing to my life. Is, uh, I was when I was a youth minister here for you know 12, 13 years. Nathan was the family life pastor. Charles Brown was the pastor. And when I I left, uh, whenever I left youth ministry to go teach school for three years, Nathan was still here on staff. And Charles retired. The the only two guys they interviewed was Nathan and myself. And uh, and the, and the, and the Lord knew our roles and what they were supposed to be. Uh, and I became the senior pastor. And, and it didn't mean that I all of a sudden was Nathan's boss or, and we're going to tell him what to do or anything like that. But uh, it could have been a very challenging time for a guy that's been here as a family life pastor for at that time, seventeen, eighteen years. Mm -hmm. And then I come back from teaching school and I become the senior pastor. But I want to tell you something. The, the, the week after I became the senior pastor, I got a letter, a, a, a personal letter from Nathan uh, letting me know that he had he'd always had my back and that he had deeply loved me since I I'd started ministry and how proud he was of me. And uh, it, it changed. It set the course for our relationship. Our offices were, were right beside each other uh, when he was here. Uh, I, I would... I'd venture to say hundreds if not thousands of times I've walked through those doors and looked at Nathan and said, well, man, what, what do you think right now? Help me. And and this guy would always just dive right in with me and uh, uh, has has become not just a, a friend and a brother but a mentor. And uh, and one of my heroes of the faith is this man right here. So uh, for me to get to honor him like this is a privilege for me. Uh, and I miss him being here every day. Uh, but I uh, also was more... I was probably happier for you than anybody in the building that you you get to go home and and enjoy a different season of life yeah. and going to the beach a lot. In other words, so yeah, anyway. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, tell them a little bit about eldership response. Well, you know, and 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 that whole transition season, um, I mean, that just became part of our journey. Yeah. And Mike, the type of things that I think we have to come to understand is that we're all wanting to hear what the Father's plan is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just our plan. Behind the scenes and all that, it was during that time of transition. When What year was it you became senior pastor? 2005. Yeah, 2005. 2006. So, yeah, so, you know, I met with the elders, and you met with the elders, and we just all praying, saying, you know, Father, what's your plan? And um, so I'm, I'm really praying about that. So now behind the scenes... As a son, Avery's seeing me just really praying hard. It's like, okay. Uh, because, you know, I had pastored a, another church for 12 years before I came here. Mm -hmm. And so without me knowing it, I've been talking about uh, Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, that so many had read, and mm -hmm. how I had a lot of confidence in, in Gary and his writing. Well, he kind of gets back in his office and shoots an email to Gary Chapman and says, my dad's going through... So and so, would you talk to him? Well, Gary, so I'm sitting at my desk here in the church and I get an email one day from Gary Chapman. Nathan, what are you doing? It's like, <laughs> this Gary? Yeah, this Gary. So long story short, 
uh, that really began a, a, a great friendship. And Gary and I still see each other. I'll meet with him, and sometimes we'll go out to lunch. And But, you know, he asked me the question. He said, um, at your age, do you feel like you need to be a senior pastor? And I, as you said, I was family life pastor. And I said, no, I, I don't really feel like I need to be. I want to be where I'm supposed to be. He said, well, if you feel like you need to be a senior pastor at your age, he said, you need to go pursue it. But if you're content as a family life pastor, he said, be a family life pastor. And so I hadn't had that word, I need to go be a senior pastor. So it was just a flow. I mean, it was like, be, uh, continue to be the family life pastor. And you're serving under a different senior pastor now. So you made it very, very easy, you know. I mean, we had some talks because authority then began to rest on your shoulder. And I was to give an account, you know, to you and to submit to you. Um, but isn't that biblical principle mm -hmm. that, that we submit to one another, you know, in the honor and the fear of the Lord? And so it's been an absolute joy. And then to see you transition from youth pastor and then God kind of put you in that season of training you know kind of in the wilderness you know and and then to come back Mike um but we all saw as as eldership um a man like and I and I, I would have to assume there's others out there but in my life I've never seen a man pursue God the way you have We've said we've used the term God chaser here for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And you've been hungry mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And you're still hungry. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's made it easy for me to try to say, I want to. Uh, you've got broad shoulders. But, anyways, try to, like they lifted Moses' arms up in battle. It's been a joy mm -hmm. to be able to do that. And so, you know, we, we never could figure out a better term than retirement but in 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 ministry it's not that I, so i'm in this season of transition and still ministering to young couples and older couples and and doing many so that's that's been my heart like family life ministry and so it's a passion and it's something that i love to do and i i, I don't dread the phone call or i don't dread another text or i don't dread another email over another family issue because we all have it in our heart in whatever department we're in. We want to share God's healing grace. Mm -hmm. and, and probably as never before, God help us to share a message of hope mm -hmm. with everybody we minister to. <clears throat> and, 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 and one thing I want to make sure I, I can say, because we were talking about this incredible growth that God's blessed us with, and he has. But I've mentioned this in staff meeting. Uh, a number of us have talked about it time and again. Uh, it would be very easy for a lot of pastors or a lot of elders when you're experiencing growth, if it's uh, numerically with the, the number of people who are coming or financial or whatever. But guys, we're not doing this. I mean, we're, we're a conduit for the Spirit of God to flow through, Amen. and we cannot take any credit. But I'll tell you what has changed. We have a greater accountability mm -hmm. on our hearts and lives right now. Uh, it, it's not that any man can boast in what's happening, but when you study the leadership uh, scriptures and we find out now we're accountable for more, mm -hmm. and that will make right. you walk humbly if you understand that right. and give sure. him glory and honor. Sure. So I'm just still glad to be a, a, a part, kind of, you know, one, one mm -hmm. spoke in the wheel yeah. and, and, and just mm -hmm. watching God do this amazing work uh, that, he, that he's doing you know, in, in every aspect of our, our church body. It's a yeah. blessing. Yeah, it and I want to finish strong. Y'all help me understand what that means. Yeah. Pray that God gives me that. I, you know, and I'm trying to do some writing now, but it, again, that's geared toward marriage and relationship. Yeah. And and I just have... Uh, yeah, sure oh, that. man, I appreciate that. But, no but, but you know, you, you're talking about I feel inadequate and this, that, and the other. I have told people I am probably one of the most distracted people God ever created. <laughs> and so for me to sit down at the desk and write the way I need to, uh, I mean, that's to me, it's like a battle sometimes. And, even, and then the other days, it's like, man, I got to get in there. I can't wait, you know? Well, I, I, you know, I know we, 
we we got a personal friendship too, but I really appreciate you more than. Well, it's very deep. The personal we could tell many many stories. Personal friendship, but I I love you like a son. I love you like a brother, and uh, and and you know God's used you to work a lot of grace in my life because you have just continued to retell my stories <laughs> many many times. Oh, you don't. Yeah, you do. You don't need to tell it today. It got me thinking when he was talking about uh, what retirement looks like. Uh, I remember uh, the day that uh, Pastor Rick came, kind of started coming on here part time to kind of fill in the gap for yeah. all the stuff that Nathan did day to day. You know, the Love's Journey was is something he still does and is still active, very active, still leading that group of people. But the day to day, the counseling, the going to see people in the hospital, and well, we we you know whether it's funerals or weddings or whatever, a lot of stuff that we do. Yeah. Uh, I remember there was a, a day where we went on our we had this staff text that just goes on like endlessly yes. it says at the top of our phone covenant staff and we are communicating non-stop all day long and we thought well we need to take nathan off of that because he's not here every day and the very day that we took your name off of covenant staff we created another one and we called it care and coverage right. and so we created another group of people that we we text for when people are going through hard places and right. it's basically staff people and, and nathan <laughs> so we took him off to staff text and added him right into care and coverage and uh so he still gets all of our emails about who's in the hospital and still goes and sees people did a funeral here this past weekend uh just so many things so anyway uh, what we hope happened, uh, I, I'm going to tell Ryan, I think now we need to, we, we've mentioned Grace and we've talked about Lance and we mentioned Rick. We probably need to go now do a podcast with just our staff people telling what they do on a, on a, on a week to week. Oh, they would love it, right? oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they would love it. They'd be like, don't make me do that. But it would be good. Yeah, yeah, it would be good. <laughs> but, but anyway, what our hope was today, honestly, uh, for you guys was to give you a, a picture kind of behind the curtain pit scene of of the hearts of the the men that God's raised up to be the leaders here. And uh, what I hope happened to you, the same thing happened to me. Nathan about made me cry a while ago. Uh, but what I, but, but I could cry looking at every one of these guys and the guys that were here last week. Just their commitment first to the Lord, then to their families, and and eventually to our church is, is nothing short of a uh, absolute blessing to me every single to get to lead these guys and I'll be honest with you if, if it didn't go in that order uh, these guys wouldn't be sitting in this room got uh, their pursuit of the father the pursuit of, of the father and their families as, as as husbands as fathers as men of God and then as as leaders at, at covenant if 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 your leadership at covenant ain't hitting at least fourth or fifth on your list then you probably don't need to be a leader at covenant uh, if you're not chasing him first, then uh, then this won't matter, and uh, and we all know that, and we hold each other accountable to that too. As a matter of fact, so that's what we wanted to communicate to you. It has been a, a privilege and an honor to sit down with these guys, and it's a it's been a privilege and honor to have you guys join us. So thank you. Uh, if you if you run into people that are that are just curious, uh, share this. Uh, if if you're if you're here at Covenant, I hope you learn more about these guys than you, you ever knew before but it's a it's an honor and privilege we appreciate you joining in with us and uh make sure you, you join us next time we appreciate it thank you <laughs>